John 14, verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, also trust in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Jesus, the way to the Father. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you... You do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you show, say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Twice a year you can go down to Sydney to take part in the Mind, Body, Spirit Festival at Darling Harbour. It's one of the biggest festivals of its kind in the world, and thousands of Australians and international visitors attend its many displays, seminars, and wander around the stalls. The exhibitors range from the mainstream to the weird, and from the earnest to those making money off people's gullibility. At the Mind Body Spirit Festival, you can have your palm, tarot, eyes, handwriting, tea leaves, aura read. You can hear the latest insights from Buddhism, Taoism, Hare Krishna, Wiccans and Flat Earthers. You can get in touch with your inner child, guardian angel, spirit guide, extraterrestrial friend or dead ancestor. You can buy incense, crystals, dream catchers, massage oil, magic supplies, witchy trinkets for your rear vision mirror and the latest soy and tofu meat substitute products. You can go to seminars with international speakers who have been in touch with aliens, who can put you in touch with the real you, who can bring a message from the spirit world, and who have their latest book for sale at the back. In the middle of all this, you'll find a stall uh, run by Christians giving out tracts and telling people about Jesus. But is Jesus just one option among many? Can he be thrown into that mix of the spiritual supermarket that's mind, body, spirit? Can people pass by and drop a bit of Christianity into the shopping trolley of their soul as long, along with some astral travel and a packet of incense and everything will be all right? Well, if you manage to grab one of those Christians who man that stall and ask them, well, you'll soon discover that that's not their thinking at all. Instead, you'll realise that they've taken to heart those first two principles that we've looked at in this series, that people matter to God and that people are lost. And you'll find their hearts reflecting Jesus' heart when we read in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And the people, many of the people at the festival are like that, they wander from stall to stall, from ideology to ideology. They, they are hungry for the truth and they just don't know where to find it. And they can be helpless before those wolves ready to pounce. Or perhaps like the Athenians that Paul preached to in Acts chapter 17, 
when he said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. Despite the stereotype, many Australians are very religious, very spiritual. And the attendance at the Mind Body Spirit Festival is testimony to that. You get thousands of people wanting to be part of that and looking for, uh, for a meaning in their life and, uh, and something to, to, to hold on to. And the Christians of the Community of Hope Stand seek to proclaim he who is unknown to the many who go past. They do that not only because they take to heart the first two principles, people matter to God and people are lost, but I think they're committed to today's principle, which is people need Jesus. People are lost. Sorry, people matter to God, people are lost, and people need Jesus. And they present Jesus at the festival. And they don't do that as sort of as a good opinion or a helpful insight, but on the authority of Jesus himself. We've just read there in John 14, verse 6, where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But if you were to stand up at that festival and proclaim that very loudly, uh, you'd have the place in an uproar uh, that someone would say that he is the only way. The stallholders would uh, be very cranky <laughs> at you saying that. Uh, but also, too, it's against the very sort of spirit of our age, isn't it, where everyone can have a little bit of this and that, and what you decide is your business, and we all get to the same place in the end, and we don't talk about it. But in the midst of the milling crowds, and over the tumult of all the voices calling this way and that, Jesus says, come to me. I am the way and the truth and the life. So I thought it might be good to spend some time looking at each of those titles today, way truth and life and see how in our harassed and helpless generation people need Jesus. Well at the beginning of John chapter 14 uh, Jesus is encouraging his disciples with the truth that he's about to go to heaven to the place of his heavenly father and to prepare a home for his people. He says to them in verse 4 you know the way to the place where I'm going. But Thomas, always reliable in these, uh, these circumstances, perhaps speaks for the others where he says, Lord, we don't know the, where you're going. So how can we know the way? Now, Jesus was speaking about the realities of heaven, but in their grief and confusion, they don't understand or they don't want to let that sink in because that means Jesus is leaving them. So Jesus gives them further encouragement. And in doing so, he gives us this great statement about his nature and his mission. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So when he calls himself the way, he means the way to heaven, the way to true eternal life. And that he is the way. No one comes to the Father except through him. Which is hard news for, for a lot of us who try to forge our way to heaven uh, and for the people at Mind, Body, Spirit, they're seeking out spirit guides or angels or astrology, anything that can help them chart that path to heaven. Other people try to get there by hard work and self-denial and being good. And people head down all these roads signposted the way to heaven but instead are heading to destruction. Martin Luther, uh, 500 years ago, said this, The very fact that people seek such a variety of ways is ample evidence that they are ignorant of the right way. After they've tried everything, they can never feel assured. They ask, who knows if this, good, if this is good enough? Some of us have been down those paths and some of us have experienced that emptiness and that deep disappointment of hanging your hopes on this thing only to find that it does not satisfy, that it doesn't answer those deep uh, questions of the heart, that what we were looking to find peace in didn't bring peace at all. And so in the midst of all the, our uncertainty, Jesus says he is the way. He's opened up the way to the tree of life, barred since Adam and Eve were cast out of Eden. But he's the reliable way, ensuring that we reach our destination. 
as the author, the writer to the Hebrews says, that Jesus is the author or the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. He starts it and he brings it to its completion. We can trust him completely. Jesus himself says in John 10 verse 28, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Jesus is making bold claims. But as he says there in our passage, believe on my testimony or at least believe on the, on the evidence of the miracles. You've seen this at work, Philip. You've seen this at work, Thomas. You know that my word is true and reliable. Because Jesus is the way and because he is the son of God, he will bring those who are entrusted themselves to him to their destination. In fact, he says that at the beginning of John 14, I will come back and take you to be with me. In a world of such uncertainty about these things, you hear Jesus absolute certainty. I will. I am the way. Because Jesus is the way, that's why we often find in other parts of the Gospels where he's scathing against all those who claim to be faithful guides but are not. Matthew 23 is hard reading. It's a whole chapter devoted to Jesus' condemnation of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. They've set themselves up as reliable leaders and guides, uh, but instead of deceived people. Jesus says to them, Woe to you, blind guides. You do not enter a heaven, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. They've shut themselves off from the way to heaven. They've rejected Jesus and they're trying to take people away from Jesus. Because Jesus is the only way, there's no plan B for salvation. For these people to take people away from Jesus is to take people away from the hope of salvation. There is simply no other option in God's plan of salvation. Every one of us are justified and condemned according to our response to Jesus. And that's something we need to have firmly in our hearts and minds. Because for one thing, that is such a relief. We can be certain about eternal realities. It isn't just a guessing game. The way to eternal life is not a choose your own adventure when you might get to the end and find out you had it wrong all along. Martin Luther said, you know, who knows if you've got it right? Having that weighing on our hearts all through our lives is not knowing for sure. The people who go to the Mind, Body, Spirit Festival are deeply spiritual, but don't have a certainty about where they're going. And so Jesus, in his mercy and compassion and love, boldly and clearly says that he is the way. And he's not scared off by our culture's aversion to exclusivity. He says that because it's true. You and I can know for sure. Jesus' life and words are right here in the Gospels. We watch and listen. And just as he said to, to Philip, look at my life and see if I'm speaking the truth. We watch and listen. We hear his invitation to come for him and rest. We're captivated by who he is. And so we're not just making a good guess, taking a bet on our eternity. He's calling you and I to have that certainty. Are you sure? Is Jesus the sole ground for your hope? Are you following him as the way to heaven? Are you putting your faith in him alone, not relying on anyone else or anything else, perhaps even anything within you? Jesus declares it. And we know that it's true. He is the way. And that is good news in a world full of uncertainty. But that means then we can tell others and share that good news with others with confidence because we're not just sharing an opinion or worse still propagating a lie. We can proclaim it confidently, not only because Jesus is the way, but because he's also the truth. The Christians at Mind, Body, Spirit Festival are captivated by this reality that uh, they can proclaim that and they're not just one group in the mix but they are uh, bold in their proclamation because Jesus is the way and he is the truth it means that Jesus isn't he doesn't just teach us what is right about God although he does but by saying that he is the truth he's saying that he's God's reality revealed 
He is truth in everything that he is. There is complete reliability in everything Jesus says and does. There's a beautiful consistency to, what, uh, to his character that we see. 29 times in the Gospel of John alone, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. And the truth that Jesus brings isn't just sort of head knowledge only, but it's transforming, it's liberating, it's life-giving. As he says in John chapter 8, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. And then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. He goes on to say that people are in slavery to the lies of the devil and there is no truth in him. God is truth. He speaks only truth. Lies, however, are Satan's native language. So truth begins in the essential nature of God. It's expressed in Jesus and in the gospel that saves people, the words of eternal life. And that results in people whose lives are then founded on truth and living in truth. Jesus prays for us, sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. We live in a world that's harassed and helpless by the lies of the evil one. And so we are called to be people of the truth who fearlessly and lovingly proclaim the truth as is in Jesus. And not just speak it, but live it. At the Mind, Body, Spirit Festival and throughout our, our community, People are being blinded by things that demonstrate that once you have been blinded, then you can believe anything. I had a friend once who was looking into alternative religions and she tried this and she tried that. And as we spoke about it one day, she said, yeah, I'm, I'm still searching. She's, she's, found, she's gone down all these paths and just been dead ends. It's just like living out Ecclesiastes, trying all these different ways of finding fulfillment and not, not getting there. But do you know, once she, once she eventually meets Jesus, she'll find exactly what she's looking for. The very thing, the very one her heart longs for and she just has not found anywhere else. That when she meets Jesus, her search will end and she'll find true life. And that's the third description of Jesus. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. In another mission statement that Jesus gives for himself, he says in John 10, verse 10, I have come. So he's speaking about his mission. Jesus on a mission, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, have it in its abundance. Our society is literally hell-bent looking for the good life. Jesus says, I am the life. I am what you are looking for. And it's life that's not just ongoing, like uh, everlasting life, it's also life in its scarcely to be imagined fullness. It's not just something we're looking for down the track, it's something that we experience here and now. In John 1 verse 4, it says about Jesus, in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. Life, like truth, is part of the essential nature of God, that he is the life given. Now, Satan can only deal in lies, in light of God's truth. And in the face of God's life giving, Satan only comes to steal and kill and destroy. He cannot bring life. And Jesus' victory over death means that he brings and is life eternal. The resurrection and the life. Our world is ravaged by death and destruction and many individuals follow the lies of Satan to their destruction and here Jesus comes bringing life. One of Satan's lies to people who don't follow Jesus as yet is that Christ don't worry about Christianity because it's all about no life. It's about no fun. It's about no nothing. It's, uh, it's all, you know... Uh, Satan will say to us, get out and live life to the full and you don't have anything to do with God because he'll just say no to you all the time. You can see the wickedness of those lies because his, vision, his version of living life to the full leads to a wasted life and a meaningless life and ultimately a doomed life. Jesus steps in and says, no, I am bringing life in all its fullness. 
That's where we experience all that we were designed and all that we yearn to be as human beings in the life that Jesus brings. It's a positive life. It's real life. And then we who have responded to Jesus and have put our trust in him have the opportunity now that we have received that abundant life, that life to its full, well then we can demonstrate it. We can live it. That our lives will be joyful and free and peaceful and carefree in the greatest sense of that word. We live in peace because we belong to God. You know, our living of the truth is never that dead kind of life like the Pharisees, just rule after rule after rule. That's not life. Our living of the way is not condescending, you know, looking down on others, thinking that we're better because we've only been brought into this by God's goodness. Our living of the, tr of the life of Jesus is a vivid testimony to the reality of our salvation, grace and peace and love in abundance is something that uh, is going to be evident in our lives. A beautiful testimony to the truth of what Jesus has said here. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Because people matter to God, because people are lost, people need Jesus. There's no plan B. But we take hold of that truth and faithfully proclaim it because we are convinced of that. We tell others and we introduce them to Jesus and God will wonderfully work and give new life in Jesus. And if you go, if you ever pay the money and go to Mind Body Spirit Festival, you'll find that in all those uh, stalls, that the community of Hope Stand is the busiest. It's almost impossible for us to believe, because we've been fed the line for years now that Australia is a hard place spiritually, that people aren't interested in Jesus, churches are declining, they're irrelevant, but people actually stand in a queue and make appointments to come and hear uh, the gospel explained to them. It's an amazing thing. Some people think, oh, Christians shouldn't be in that, uh, in that, ex in that uh, festival at all. But here are these group of Christians bringing the way and the truth and the life in Jesus and people are hungry for it. They line up to listen to it. God works. And when his people are part of that work and we're participating in that, well, many Christ Australians have come and will come to that glorious hope of, their, of new life in the Lord Jesus. People need Jesus and people and Jesus is there for people. How about we pray about that? Let's pray. Father, we praise you for the way that you have given the Lord Jesus to this lost and dark world, that you so love the world uh, that you gave Jesus and here we hear Jesus saying that he uh, is fully committed to that mission as well. That he is the way, that he is the truth, that he is the life. For those of us here today who trust in him, Lord, we, we know that. We've experienced that. We've been captivated by that. And we thank you for the way that you've brought us out of darkness into light. Where, we've, where we were lost and, and helpless, as we thought last week, you have sought us out and found us and brought us home. Lord, we thank you that, that that message and the reality of Jesus is just as true and just as powerful today as it's ever been. And we thank you that uh, in, in a world that pretends not to be interested in you, um, there you are, seeking and searching. We thank you for the Lord Jesus who brings such clarity and certainty to these uh, crucial issues to our lives. Where are we going to be in eternity? What is our meaning as human beings? Thank you that all these big, deep, real questions are answered fully and solely in Jesus. Lord, and thank you that that gives us great confidence as we share that with our friends. It isn't just an opinion. Uh, it's the eternal realities. And we thank you that when we introduce people to Jesus, uh, he shows himself so uh, 
full of mercy and compassion, forgiveness and true abundant life. Lord, help us to be able to live out those realities in our own life so that we might be a shining testimony to others about the reality of what Jesus says. And we pray it in his name. Amen.